Let's go segment two. Let's do what a boon. And this is a look back at the impact of Boone Pickens. Cedric, a Texas guy, a uh, Texas oilman, born in Oklahoma but lived in Texas. You got to know him over the years. The Longhorns were clearly a team that he, as an Oklahoma State fan, looked to get his university uh, on some sort of level playing field with all the donations he made. But he, uh, he was no stranger in your neck of the woods in Austin, that's for sure. What a big loss for, for not only for the college football community, and the business community at large, but also for people in our region, Jen, T. Boone Pickens was a was a mo monolithic figure in, in in our lives. Just a he was the Phil Knight yeah. uh, of Oklahoma State. Don't get it twisted. He put Oklahoma State on the map with countless donations, uh, facility upgrades, coaching upgrades. He brought brought the program, he helped bring it back to relevancy after Barry Sanders, after Thurman Thomas. And I, I for one, uh, just always got a big kick out of it. We would go to Stillwater and he'd show up and uh, so he'd send someone over. Mr. Pickens would like for you guys to come over to his suite. And we'd chat with him at halftime. And he just, he, he loved to shoot the ball. He was a straight shooter. Um, I, I, I do know this, Jen. I, as far as about my personal connection with him, uh, Kirk Bowles and I started that po this podcast, uh, Second Thought, on Hookem.com a couple of years ago, and uh, we had T Bone T Boone in uh, a phone call from I guess it was that episode twenty eight, and mm -hmm. so he starts talking, and Kirk goes, "Well, yeah, what's going on with Gundy?" Uh, you know, and he goes, "Oh, Mike doesn't return my calls. We don't really have a relationship," <laughs> and I know that that turned the whole state of Oklahoma on its ear, you yeah. be Trammel, and the crew had to get busy that day. Yeah, that's for sure. You know, and the thing about T Boone with what you said is, is absolutely right, a straight shooter. And lots of times that came across as just hilarious to those of us who were, were listening. He wasn't trying to be funny, and yet he was so honest in his assessment and, and the things that he said. You know, obviously he, being in business in the state of tax, Texas, had a lot of friends who were UT fans, UT alum, boosters, those sorts of things. He was always wanting to try to get his alma mater up to that level. And I think he was very pleased with being able to see those UT friends and talk about Oklahoma State's wins against them in football. That was a big deal. But on the flip side, he was also not, uh, not shy about talking about Oklahoma State's record in recent years against Oklahoma. Even as they had started to beat Texas on a regular basis, they were not beating Oklahoma on a regular basis, only a couple wins over the last decade plus. So definitely a, a, a bone of contention for T. Boone Pickens that uh, they did not do better against Oklahoma regularly. But Cedric, I think that we can safely say while he did so much for Oklahoma State, I think that that had a, an impact on the Big 12 in general. I mean, you see Oklahoma State being a regular contender uh, at a time when Texas had fallen back. Oklahoma State was able to step into that void. And now as Texas returns to, uh, you know, that contender type of status, Oklahoma State's still there, still very much a team that people will look at and say, wonder if the Cowboys are going to play for a Big 12 championship again. I think that has helped to change the way the Big 12 looks, but, you know, also teams that may be down the pecking order are saying, hey, we're going to go out and build stadiums. We're going to do these sorts of things, see what it can do for our program. I think we've seen a lot of uh, sort of that, that tide raising all boats, and I think one of the parts of that tide that was pretty significant was Boone Pickens. You can't, you can't win in big-time athletics without money no. now, Jen. Everybody has players, but if you want to get the elite players and the elite coaches – and have built elite facilities and and be elite in the marketing department you got to have a fat cat with fat money uh, and willing to break bread to the right people i'm telling you texas had had two guys uh joe well actually several joe jamel was one the big time mm -hmm. lawyer from houston who's passed and frank denius a, a military veteran who's also uh, a, a many times a millionaire maybe a billionaire those men were very, very uh, generous with their money and their time. And 
if you're going to compete on a national level and, and Oklahoma State wanted to be that contender, they wanted to, to rise up the ranks of the Big 12 and join Texas and Oklahoma, they had to have a guy willing to not only uh, support uh, as far as emotional support and love for that school, but also provide the monetary support that's very much needed yeah. to compete in this marketplace. Yeah, and even as we talk about, you know, the sort of the ripples of what was done at Oklahoma State, I don't think we can, I don't think we are, are saying in any form or fashion that the biggest impact, I mean, it was in Stillwater, it was on Oklahoma State, a stadium that had really become antiquated uh, and, and was in serious need of repair and it mirrored the program. I mean, the program needed the infusion that Boone Pickens gave them. Uh, his initial giant gift of $165 million was really almost all football. Uh, that, that big gift, he'd given a, about $100 million prior to that. But that one was the football, we're going to get this turned around. And it has been significant. You know, I think that it was the money, but it was also uh, Boone's attitude. You know, he talked about winning championships and they won a Big 12 championship. Uh, they came real close to playing back in the BCS days for the national championship in 2011. So, you know, he talked about things that maybe Oklahoma State fans, you know, somewhere deep in the recesses of their heart and their mind, they might have thought, you know, one day I'd like to see this. But he gave voice to those things and, and really said, we can do this as, as Oklahoma State. And so I think there was great power in that. I think that will continue to carry on. Obviously, uh, his, uh, his, his financial gifts, they will continue to pay dividends to the school. But that attitude, I think, was uh, something that Oklahoma State fans could really grab onto and feel good about. They always had the pride, but I think to really see that in action and hear that from Boone Pickens was a really, really big deal.